Welcome. Uh, my name is Kathy Carter. I'm one of the librarians here at Eastfield College Library. Um, today we're going to talk about topic analysis and how it can impact your success with student research. Um, let me begin by um, just posting this question. Um, what would you do? What would you attempt to do if you knew what you with your assignments? And one of the pieces of the puzzle is the information you use when you're turning in college level assignments. It's like a different world as far as things you might know and do to find information and share with your friends. And I guess I would just posit that this is, um, that we have on hand um, within our resources everything you need to succeed with your, um, with your final um, paper or speech. If you um, take advantage of our Eastfield resources, this is the um, worksheet we're going to work with today. And the way that um, this this instruction is structured is that we will uh, take a topic. If you have brought your own topic, and I have a topic that I'm going to explore just as an example, and just show how you can break it down, create a strong um, thesis sentence or you know statement and uh, just kind of flesh out all of the terms that you might need to do to find the kinds of materials you'll need. Topic analysis for better research. Well, we're going to begin with the concept of identifying your topic. Most people are very anxious to get started and they barrel into um, whatever you know they have an interest in. And I would, I would certainly encourage you to consider selecting a topic that would be of great interest to you. That way, um, it matters. It's something you want to learn about. And if you, especially with a longer assignment it, or like a big research paper, it kind of keeps you going through the, through the whole process. So you've got your topic. And we're going to look at a short. Um, slideshow um, about pre-topic research analysis. The first thing you'll want to do is define exactly what it is that, what you're, that you're looking for. These are some questions you'll want to ask. What do I know about the subject? What do I need to know? For example, global warming. You can think about things that you know offhand, and um, it's just a good jump start. You might have some ideas about what you want to cover under this subject. Um, when you're doing research, however, you really need to consider, um, I guess, the people that you're going to submit this to, especially in, in a college setting. You're um, intended audience is faculty members, people that have scholarly um, background, they have higher degrees, their expectations, if, you, if you've thought anything about MLA, APA, there are very, there's some very strict guidelines. Some instructors will tell you exactly what they want and some are going to expect you to know what to do. Um, so when you're looking at your um, initial um, topic, it's good to start thinking about things such as um, if, if, if you were doing something where you had a personal point of view that you were, or you know, argumentative, you might be thinking about um, statistics that would support your view, whether um, you're going to get in your information from scientific or um, professional journals, and also um, acronyms, just kind of key terms, um, terminology of that subject. So. As you think about collecting these, um, these different subject you know, components, the areas you might consider again are like definitions, basic concepts that we're going to look at is even framing the structure of your, um, your final paper or speech, uh, timelines, historic overviews, uh, like I was saying, terminology, distinctive phrases, and relevant jargon. So there are some places that you can go to um, here in our library to, to, to get that first initial search. 
we probably today would do a little quick search on Wikipedia, but let me just reference that by saying Wikipedia is, um, it's fine to just get a quick overview on a topic, but if you decide to cite this resource in any kind of paper that you submit um, to your instructor, you'll come to grief. The reason is that um, it looks so good, it's out there, you know, and everybody uses it, but it's a uh, wiki, just like, um, you know, YouTube is a wiki. If you join, you can post your videos. Flickr, if you join, you can post your photographs. Um, Wik Wikipedia, if you join, you can post your encyclopedia article. So there's no way to determine the authority of the contributors, and that's really one of the criteria for selecting um, the right kind of information for your instructors. So, you know, you're out there, you do your search. It's very important to be in touch with the requirements of your assignment. Uh, if, it's a, if it's an eight-page essay, that's one consideration versus maybe a two-page, you know, response paper, something like that. Sometimes um, the requirements of your information need do not equal the information that you end up finding. And um, in that case, it's important to consider um, broadening your search. Especially I see this with people, students that are really interested in like maybe the latest soccer player or something, you know, there's actually a cycle of information. If somebody is really new and somewhat esoteric, you'll find that um, there's not gonna be that much out there. There has to be some time before articles are written or books are written, that kind of thing. Also, um, this is how it could kind of look as you broaden your, um, your approach. So somebody picks Grand Theft Auto as their topic. Well, they may not, you know, they're certainly, they're probably not going to find a book with the title Grand Theft Auto. Um, and that is one of the things that students will often confuse, thinking if, it's, if I don't find a book with that title, it's just not going to be out there. But uh, if they do select books on um, video games um, and teenage violence or that kind of thing, teens and the media or um, the internet, there's lots of ways you can broaden the scope of your search. But this is what usually happens in our information age. You have the requirements of your um, assignment and you are just drowning. So, it requires really sometimes a little bit of um, refining of your topic. Like for instance, if somebody just says, I want to do, um, what the one, my example is going to be childhood obesity. Well, okay, what about childhood obesity? I mean, there's going to be a lot out there you might want to consider the focus of your topic. So that's when you modify by narrowing your topic Here's one where somebody chose education. You really have to begin to think, um, what about education? What am I going to actually address here? I've only got three pages, something like that. So this is um, just about places that you can go. We're not going to go into this, but we do have a link um, on our library page where you can type, you know, you can email the librarian questions. You can also um, actually pick up the phone if there's anything you need help with, you can get one-on-one -on -one assistance. We have lots of research guides available. I really hope that you would consider us your, um, I don't know, like your private librarian or li information consultant. So um, let's go back to the next screen. We're going to um, talk about identifying your topic. This, um, again, takes some consideration. It can, you can just have a thought in your head and I'll show you the one that I picked is childhood obesity. I don't know if it's showing up. Um, again, we were just talking about, well, what about it? Uh, it's not a bad idea to consider um, at least three main concepts. So as you go into your discussion or um, your final product, you'll have some points that you're going to cover. Here are um, some examples for childhood obesity, fast food, advertising, and the USA. 
So there is a place on your um, handout where it talks about taking your topic and turning it into a question. This is the beginning of creating a thesis statement. If your topic is, child, for the example, childhood obesity, um, a question that I could you know, create from that would be, what is the effect of advertising in the fast food industry on childhood obesity in the United States? And a thesis statement would be something along the lines of childhood obesity um, and in, I guess, in its relationship to, all right, just take the question mark out. <laughs> what is um, childhood obesity and um, fast food advertising, or the impact of, what is, of uh, fast food advertising on childhood obesity in the United States? And you know, it's, it's interesting because you can actually, once you start looking for information, you realize there's like global concerns. Now they say that Mexico has the largest um, obesity ranking in the um, world, and it's always been the United States. So you might want to, you know, sometimes even think of using that type of defining thing. Um, the, the next step would be to identify related terms. And that's where it's a really good idea to go in and do um, a, a analysis of your topic, a short overview of the whole, you know, describing it, and then that way you might even find the kinds of relationships you're looking for as well. And um, today, I think we'll take a moment to go into Wikipedia, look up a search, you know, a search term, and see. Like, as I was um, looking into this particular subject, there are, there are um, in the United States, there's some government organizations that do quite a lot of studies. The, um, the federal FDA is the Food and Drug Administration. NHI is the National Health um, I think, Initiative, Institution. They, uh, yeah, Institute. They, they generate reports. They have statistics about the yearly rise or fall and these types of things. And there's, lots of, um, there's a lot of information on health and what, what is like a, a proper body weight, and that kind of thing. Um, certainly, the uh, idea of um, international ranking and nutritional you know, concerns in our country. But under fast food, um, I've come up with some ideas such as the size of the portions, you know, like Texas actually has the, the biggest rate of the super size me offers in the country. <laughs> so everything's big in Texas. It's like, <laughs> anyway, um, just fast food calories, the makeup of these type of um, food, the pricing that's so low, the way locations are on every street corner if you're a parent driving home from work and you're tired and your kid is like crying because they see the golden arches and the facility design how they have playgrounds they say there are more playgrounds in you know McDonald's than in any you know part or state in this country you know so they'll have more playgrounds than any municipality so and um, the effect of advertising of course we know they target minors and the idea of having, you know, prizes like Happy Meal prizes, there are often contests or a tie-in with a, you know, a popular film that's just come out. And certainly the media, it's like you can hear it on the radio, you can, you know, it's pretty bombarding. So now we're going to take a look um, at your topic. And generally when people are beginning their research, I ask that question, where do you begin your research? Most people, with honesty, will say the web. Uh, but I would like to posit to you that an alternative would be to, um, well, OK, go to the web. But let's, uh, I hope you will consider Googling Eastfield College Library. This is, this is your gateway to the, um, the type of information that you cannot get in the first five hits of Google. Eastville College Library, um, one of the features that is really distinctive are the um, online databases. These are subscription databases. They are um, extremely expensive. I think the district probably spends a quarter of a million dollars a, you know, a year on these subscriptions. And we have almost 200. A database is like a refrigerator. So like 
it could be full of maybe one item. You have history databases, you have poetry databases, there's film databases, there are um, just numerous types out there. And um, we'll go into this and maybe look for some information in just a minute on databases. But oh, actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea just to go to, might as well pick, I was going to go to Wikipedia, but I think I'll go to Britannica to do a search, um, um, to do a background search on this topic. Oh, it's E, I would guess. Um, let me go back. This is a way to, you know, to work smarter, not harder. If you, um, let's see, if you look into your topic and you realize that it's not really going to have the depth or the, you know, all of the aspects that you might feel that you need, then you save yourself a step. And research is really a process. A lot of it is um, you might start in one direction, refine. You have to really be flexible. When you're um, accessing these databases um, off camp or outside of the library, basically, it's a very simple login. And everything's running a little slow today. Okay. So I'm going to go up to um, search for childhood obesity. Did I get it? Okay. Um, I think I'll just take the um, the second one that looks like it's kind of an overview. So um, you could do your own search in the um, on your iPad if you wish. I know um, that you're you're pursuing um, more of a personal writing type of uh, assignment. But let's say you're looking for information. Um, Oh, I forgot to say, too, a lot of schools have contracts where they have fast food items in there, um, you know, or they have Coke machines. They have all this, you know, tie-in. Where st what, are these, what are students going to pick if they can get, you know, Pizza Hut pizza or something? So, um, again, it's like here's an association that would be maybe important to um, reference, the American Academy of Pediatrics. And... These are some of the conditions that exist. Oh, and another aspect is even parent rights. I know there was a story about a young man who was a child whose parent, they were seeking to have him taken away from her because he was um, morbidly obese, but she wasn't doing anything about it. So um, there's some strategies to prevent this. And this is a very kind of short overview. But um, here are some facts that you come away with. An estimated 9 million American children over age 6 were overweight. So when you do this little topic background, you, it's not exhaustive information, but it might give you um, some, some ideas about where you want to go with your search. I'm going to take us back into the, um, the database page. And just um, take a moment also to let you know how to proceed once you have um, generated some search terms. I figure this is a, not a bad time to have a little introduction to a couple of our resources. Academic search complete is always listed first when you're, um, when you're looking at the databases because it's a meta search engine. That means it searches numerous databases. There are 36 um, EBSCO databases that it will search, you know, political science, health, you know, language arts, all the subjects, and also the um, Wilson databases. So now it's almost, you know, 80 different ones. So let me go ahead.
Oops. And because of that, you really get, oh, unless you don't spell it right. Okay. Let me try that again. So you can see the results are pretty overwhelming. <laughs> you will sometimes have instructors who are requesting um, the use of scholarly journals. Scholarly journals are created by associations of professionals. Um, it's usually you know, related to one specific subject. So it could be the American Heart Association. And their scholarly journal is going to feature you know, reports and studies on um, maybe heart treatment, that kind of thing, heart disease. So that's just something to know about. Whenever you see graphs and charts, generally it's going to be related to research and studies. But I'm going to go down and I'll select academic journals. And sometimes an instructor says that's all you can use. If you're in this database, you don't have to be on the web wondering if you're finding the right kind of information. If you select academic journal, everything else is sorted out. And, and, the, and you know, you can know with confidence whatever you select is going to be um, appropriate. So I'm just going to have magazines, newspapers, and academic journals. Still, we're going to have a lot of results here. There's another way to um, narrow your results. and. Relevance is a really important um, concept when you're doing research. It's really, uh, I would think, criteria that is important to pay attention to. Some students will just do a catalog search, pick the first five books, run with them. Again, it's like working harder, not smarter. They get home, they have to bring three of them back. They're back to square one. So here's a way to, um, to narrow your search by subject. So what I'm going to do is just look for some terms here that are um, relevant to my inquiry. Let's see. And it's always a good idea to, um, to narrow it to the United States if you can. I mean, or unless you, you'll get a lot of international articles. And if you want to look at the, um, the impact of childhood obesity in like China, for instance, then, then you would you know, leave that unchecked. Um, and you could also add that to your search. Uh, let's see here. I don't see advertising. Okay. Oh, United States, I got that one. And when you're doing research, less is more. When it's going to be more to your, um, to meet your information need. So I didn't get that US one done. I think I'm gonna go back for that. Oh, I'll just keep looking. I think what I'll do is put um, childhood obesity. And this is where you can go into an, well, I don't even think you have to do an advanced search. If you do AND in capital letters, childhood obesity and advertising. Television, food, advertising restrictions. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to look at this. Well, this is multi-country, but still you might find something that um, is of relevance. So if you, if you select an article that looks like it's something that you would be interested in, you're going to see with, um, in this first screen what's called um, an abstract. 
This is an overview of the, the article. It gives you a little paragraph describing the content. That way you can take a look and go, is this really what I'm looking for? Um, I would probably go on to pick another one. But um, just so that I can show you the features of this database, I'm going to go ahead and a detailed. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm not seeing a, I'm not seeing a HTML for it, or I'm going to pick a different one. I'm having a little trouble here. I, I don't usually get results without the actual paper. Um, let's see. Okay. Right over here, you can see the PDF, and that indicates that um, there's actually um, a digital version of this article available. And if you have the PDF version, it looks just like it's, um, you know, a photocopy from an actual print resource. So these are originally in print, and they're made um, available through digitalization. There's a lot of confusion. Sometimes instructors will say you cannot do any research um, from the web. Well, you know, technically speaking, as students come, can I use this? This is on the web. Well, yes, you've had to go to the, on the web to get to the Eastfield College Library, but this is, um, this is part of a collection that is a digitalized uh, content that would be in reference books or, or journals and magazines. So this would be something I, I know if the instructors understand acceptable form of information. On this side, you can, there are some options that you can either print this article, you can email it to yourself. This is a great one if you have to do a works cited list or reference. There is um, right here a little uh, selection you can make, say that you are using MLA, then it's going to send you everything, um, all the content on your, uh, that you'll need for your works cited list, and that's a real feature. You're out on the web, you find articles, you're on your own. And, um, and, the, and there is a different type of um, formatting for articles that are found on websites. So you just email this to yourself and it's a persistent link. Persistent links mean that when you receive your article, you click in and you go straight to it. You don't have to search again in Academic Search Complete. You have that article. Um, let me go back. Well, I'm not sure. Let me see here. Okay. There's also um, the ability to save it to your flash drive. Um, here's one that's really good to know about, this little yellow um, document on the screen. It says cite. So you can get your citation um, content by emailing it, but you can also get it right here from the web page from this database. It's thinking about it, maybe. Maybe it's not going to give it to me. Do you think it's not going to come? OK. What you get, you get all the different, um, it could be APA, MLA, um, Turabian, many of the different style guides, but it's going to be all the content on this particular article. And it's just fine to copy and paste it, create your own works cited list. We're having some difficulties today. Okay. Well, are there any questions about Academic Search Complete? Okay. Well, if you, um, we actually have a mobile app that's really nice if you have like an iPhone or anything like that. Um, it's, the login will come, like if you're um, on your home computer, it's just your, it's going to have a page that comes up and asks for your first and last name and your student ID without the E. So just think of the name that you registered under. And sometimes we, people do have difficulty if they're using nicknames. If you use your, just your last name and your ID number, you should go through. So I'm going to, but 
but you might have noticed, like once I logged into Encyclopedia Britannica, then I'm able to get into all of the, the databases. So now I'm going to go back to um, our home page and show you a little bit about our, our online catalog. But first, um, I do feel like it's, it's a good thing to know about, oh, I forgot about this, that if you're not sure what kind of topic you want to select, there are a lot of, um, we have quite a few databases that are designed especially for the, um, and it, it, these are often you know, assignments where students are asked to pick a current issue or controversy and take a position and do you know, a persuasive or argumentative speech or essay. So um, I'm going to take you to Opposing Viewpoints. And we have like 19 databases that are designed to support this type of inquiry. So it's really a great place to go, A, to just find topics or, you know, to find almost it's like a grocery list of what most instructors are requesting. I'm going to take you to the Browse Issues page and it's pretty comprehensive. So you can just um, shop around if you're thinking about different ones. And I'm sure they have childhood obesity. Let's see. Childhood obesity. Your overview um, of any kind of information, it's, it is. It's a nice little article, and there's quite a bit more. It just oh, it has the opening paragraph there. This um, tells you the types of information. Some instructors will say you have to have two journal articles, you have to have one newspaper article, you have to have you know this, that. You can just go down the list and see it's very comprehensive. Um, and it also has specific um, viewpoint types of articles. So you can see you know, what, how people defend their position. There are you know, just a couple here, well three right here, but over here you can see there are 38 viewpoints. So you're just seeing like a sample of quite a bit more. Um, academic journals. There are 23 in this particular page. And statistics, this can be really um, a strong you know, part of your presentation if you're able to support your position with, you know, with statistics. And it looks like there are 10 of those. And they, this is a great website for currency. As you can see um, under the news, it's the 17th of September is their latest update. And reference. These are materials that are always used in um, college and university libraries. So if you take an article from a reference source, you can know that it's going to be um, authoritative. The nice thing about the websites are these have been selected by educators, so you don't have to wonder. There are, um, you know, all information is not created equal out there on the web. and. Um, Certainly there's some URLs you should be aware of, but these have already kind of gone through the grid, so they're, they're very um, well accepted. And I think it's really kind of neat to know if you, if you see an audio interview or something, that these all have transcripts. So it doesn't, it's not like you have to try to you know, dig through it. And related topics are very helpful sometimes too if you're still trying to decide. So that's academic, um, that's opposing viewpoints. And I'm going to go back home. I got into that from just, you know, being on this, this um, decide here and under pick a topic. But if you go into online databases, it's, it's featured in the, like kind of the top five. And let's see here. I'm going to. show you how to use our catalog really quick. And the books that are selected for the library catalog are, um, are selected by professionals. Like I was saying, uh, there is a lot of concern over the quality of the books and also that they support our curriculum. So let's see how we come out here. The first results that you get from any um, search in our catalog will be for the whole district. And um, so yeah, it's going to 
make a difference if you have a lot of time or if you're in a hurry to get, you know, or you just need what's on hand. If you see something like, um, maybe you're interested in this particular book, but it's over and L is at North Lake. You can always request a book that's from another campus in our district and it's that same login that we did before. It's just your first and last name and your ID number. And what it will tell you is that this book will be, you know, sent to the Eastfield um, Circulation Desk. It's uh, very convenient. You return it to the desk and you get it for three weeks. You will get, like, a notice that things are due through email. And it's, all you have to do is um, link in. You can request, you know, extend your checkout period. The only reason you might not be able to is if somebody is um, behind you, they're requesting that book. So let's see. No, I don't know. Let me, it's not letting me go back. Oh, okay. Oh, that's my record. It says A. No, I'm so sorry. Now I'm going everywhere. Um, there's just one last thing I wanted to show you. Whenever you see a book that um, you are going to check out and use for your research, if you click into this web bridge, you'll find that um, you can also get citation information that's regarding this particular book. So if you had to, you know, your report's in MLA, that's, you know, where you have to have that page with all your references that you've used in your report. This is not a plagiarism. This is a service to you from um, the databases provide this and also um, the catalog where you can create like a Word document, copy and paste it into that, and then later on, you know, when it's time to create your, your works cited list, you have all the puzzle pieces. We're, we're not always sure if every bit of the formatting is correct, and so we encourage students to really take a look at that and make sure that, um, that they're getting it exactly right. Okay. So, there one last thing, there are um, related terms over on the side in the um, this cloud. It's always kind of nice, and you can sometimes find um, other links within a book if you find just what you're looking for. These, anything that's highlighted is going to be um, a link to more information. And sometimes you have to, if things are checked out, you could get a broader topic like the, just a book on obesity and check within the table of contents. Generally, there is a, you know, a chapter devoted to childhood obesity. So um, that's how we use the, that's the Eastfield catalog. Are there any questions? Can go back home. I thank you for your kind attention. And um, if you want to work on this or go listen to this thing. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for attending.